now we, I'm going to discuss here with you, uh, I'm going to show to you three, uh, a series of three quite similar cases with similar histories and relatively similar, similar lesions. This is a 13 year old Lipizener mare who is used for dressage. It was referred for CT evaluation due to a left hind lameness that was localized uh, to the fetlock using interarticular block. She had a three month history of lameness uh, and uh, that did not improve with stall rest. She had a grade four out of five lameness and she had moderate effusion and showed quite considerable pain on flexion of this joint. So on the radiographs, we, we don't see major lesions, but if you look closely, it, it, it seems like the medial aspect of the joint is a little narrower than the lateral aspect. On the CT, so the results of CT show the subchondral cyst-like lesion of the medial aspect, uh, on the, so the, the medial condyle of the metacarpus, there's quite extensive sclerosis associated with that lesion. And also, if you look closely to proximal P1, you see hypotenuated lesions on both of these views, more easily, most easily seen on the sagittal view. There was some periosteal perforation next to the segment of P1. And also looking very closely, I hope you guys can see, but there is a hypotenuating line uh, coming from the lesions down to the periosteal um, proliferation. These have been reported previously on CT studies, and uh, it's believed that these are vascular channels. This is the second case. Um, with a similar history, two-month uh, two history of left forelimb lameness. This was a stallion, pretty large horse. Um, and the lameness was previously localized to the fetlock with intertricular anesthesia. A uh, thorough evaluation with radio radiographs and ultrasound was performed by the referring veterinarian. However, no lesion could be found on those two modalities. The horse was then, uh, sent to uh, a different place where they perform a bone scan. Um, and the bone scan revealed um, focal intense areas of radiopharmaceutical uptake in the lateral condyle of the left fetlock. Open presentation here with those the horses. So once they found those, uh, unfortunately I don't have the CT images to show, um, the bone scan to show to you, but the horses referred to us for CT once they found that increased uptake on the fetlock. Uh, he was quite painful, grade three to four, or grade four out of five, and uh, it showed severe resistance to flexion of that fetlock. It's quite painful, similar to the case before. On CT, uh, we saw again a subchondral cyst like lesion. This was the lateral condyle with some sclerosis, not so much sclerosis as the case before, but there's some sclerosis surrounding the lesion as well. And this is the third case uh, with similar lesion. This was, um, was seen by us initially. Um, well, it was seen in the field and then sent to us for imaging. His, he had a history of bilateral hind limb lameness and uh, most severe on the right hind. Uh, the referring veterinary localized the right hind limb lameness to the fetlock um, with nerve blocks and sent the horse in. So they took radiographs. Again, this is another case. They took radiographs and could not see um, any obvious lesions. So he was sent in for bone scan. The bone scan showed increased uptake on the lateral condyle um, of both hind limbs most uh, easily seen or most obvious on the right hind and less severe on the left hind. So we CT the horse and found, uh, again, a cyst-like, a subchondral cyst-like lesion on the lateral condyle. Uh, and this lesion was found on both hind limbs, most severe on the right. Again, these are images on the right side. A good amount of um, sclerosis surrounding that lesion and a little bit of irregularity on the on the proximal aspect of P1 and the opposing um, articular surface. 
This is the horse, it's the only horse that I have follow up on. Uh, this horse was injected with um, intraticular stem cell and it was reported recently that he's doing very well with that injection.